Welcome to the uh, Leisure Youth and Amenities meeting. Emergency evacuation procedures, there's quite a few of you here. In the event of a fire alarm, fire drill, or other emergency, please exit the room using the doors indicated and assemble in the uh, designated meeting points. Filming and recording of meetings in line with the openness of local government bodies regulations, this meeting may well be filmed or recorded. It is being recorded uh, by town council or members of the public. Item one on the agenda, submissions from the public. No? Okay. Item two is to receive any apologies for absence. Okay. Roger. I have apologies from Roger and also from Kerry Cohen. Okay. Item three is declarations by members under the Local Government Act 1972. Yeah, I have to declare an interest because I know that gentleman, um, because my, my son attends his club, so an interest in 8.4.1. Coding club. Yeah, the coding yeah. club. And it's already in my uh, declaration of interest. Okay. Um, and also the representatives on the Patrick Hilton and Stokes Volunteer Centre. Oh, yeah, yeah. Declare. Yeah, okay. That one. So that is 8.1.3. Everybody yeah. happy? by the chair, uh, none other than to say have a lovely Christmas everybody and happy new year. Thanks for being around the corner. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Item 5 is to confirm the minutes of the meeting held on the 14th October 2019 is a correct record, which I think I chaired as well. Nice. Um, yes, you did. 
That's <laughs> that's in your pack. Opposed to Tom's and the so second here. Yeah. For which two, those in favour? to go and it's all the way over. Shall we move people forward? So yes, that is a good idea. So I propose as we've got quite a lot of members of the public here on the ground side of things, if we move item eight, yeah, I do it in its entirety forward at this position. Yeah, yeah. I second. Seconded uh, Franklin, those in favour? Item 8 is to uh, deal with grant funding applications. 8.1.1 is Bradley Stoke Youth Cricket Club SLA. We have all the yeah. information in the pack and we have a representative from the Youth Cricket Club here to answer any councillor questions. Yeah, nothing further to add. But really, if there's any questions, feel free to do with us. That is a youth grant aid application, youth subset agreement application of three thousand five hundred pounds. Yeah, as it was seen. Yeah. So it's proposed by Tom, three thousand five hundred on the SLA. Thank you, seconded. Brian. Yeah. Those in favour. Thank you very much indeed. Can I say, on the first page of this, <coughs> it talks about young participants, the importance of teamwork and fair play. I think, um, <coughs> just highlighted that, because I think that's a, a very well worthwhile thing right now. Very important. We totally agree. <coughs> Thank you very much indeed for coming along. Thank you. And uh, when is your recruitment time for the young people? Sorry. Any participation? <coughs> Any recruitment time or winter time? Or how we recruit. Um, you are old, Tom. No good, you're too old. <laughs> I'm too old. Uh, we rely, in the last couple of years, on the All Stars cricket, particularly, uh, which is the ECB initiative for five to eight year olds. So that's been quite successful. We had a bit of help from the local cricket board in marketing that. So fingers crossed that we retain a decent number of those younger ones going forward. Then. That should be the bulk of our recruitment, I guess, at the bottom of the age pyramid. Okay. okay. Previous to that, we were doing a few flyers and... Okay. Um, Usually what time do you use to take new recruits? Usually what time do you take new recruits? What age? No, no what time? time. 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 Oh, sorry. Um, our indoor nets start at early Feb. Uh, 4th of February, I think it is. And outdoors in the middle of April. How much have you got from last year, new recruits? Oh, new ones, that's a good point. Question. Um, it'd be a little bit of a guess, but I reckon probably 40 to 50 to include the All Stars group. We probably had about 15 to 20 older. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Just Thank you. Thank you. Did you have equal numbers of girls and boys? Or do you no, recruit? we don't. Um, do you recruit girls as well? We are trying. Uh, as it happens, there's a sort of spin off from the All Stars cricket that's coming in this year. Again, it's a national initiative. Um, for sort of eight to eleven year olds, um, and we're going to use that as a girls only proposition. So we're going to wait 
to see if that brings more girls in. Okay, so you are going to be trying to get them yeah, more? Yeah, we have been for the last couple of years. We are slightly scuppered that we've got a very good girls cricket club just down the road in Frenchy. Okay. So it's a little bit of a snowball <coughs> effect there, I think. So um, if people know about that, they may well prefer to go there, particularly if they a little bit unsure maybe playing mixed cricket with the boys. So yeah. we're hoping if we can offer a girls only yeah. position this year, okay. as previously we've just included them with the boys. But it's something that you're May. interested in and very much so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we had a women's team start up last year. Okay, great. So this is the next natural progression. But it's, um, cool. Thank you will see how it goes this year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for coming in to support your application. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, just need um, details if you can email them through to anyone who's successful tonight on their applications. Sure. Yeah. Tom, did you want something? Preferably to tomorrow if possible. Thank you. 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 So moving on, item 8.1.2 is the four towns that fail in transport. Again, you've got a uh, pack and uh, simply... Nope, no one here. So the um, service level for you then is the same as last year, which um, is £2,404.24. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Some people do do a valuable job, especially on the mm -hmm. Especially as now they do do a yeah. week, particularly for Bracken State. Yeah. Funny enough, I've stuck down here today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and one of the things, without <coughs> being better, all the using of the government, you know, they do that specific to that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Second thing is, two people mentioned that they Short drivers, why they probably not doing this. It's interesting because when we actually look through, I'm not actually going to say I don't want to do this or anything because it's a great thing to support. Um, they've got 920 plus members and then they talk about uh, 25 passengers being from Bradley State. Um, so, I'm assuming that having 970 members, we've only got 25 people in Bradley Stoke which are members. And it, it's worded slightly differently. So, I think in, in reality, as the councillor uh, supporting this, I think you ought to put something on the website or something with a newsletter or whatever to say that people, you know, we pay towards this, yeah. describe what it is, and say if you want to use the service, this is who you contact, because it does appear. Mm -hmm. um, that it's being used predominantly by people from outside of Bradley State. We could do a sum promotion. And we're not putting yeah. a small amount of money into it either. It's, it's, you know, it's a reasonable sum of cash. We always advertise on our notice boards. They normally have, they send us posters. So the journal as well? Yeah. 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 Um, Yes, we can definitely do. Because if you take, and it is on our website, there is a link through to that. Yeah, if you website, take 25 so. people, mm -hmm. then that's £100 per person, isn't it? I think coverage in Bradley Stoke from memory only started last year, didn't it? No, there wasn't. No, no, they, yeah, they didn't go. Wasn't there a specific route in Bradley Stoke that started? No. no. And they take people for hospital appointments and things like that. Sometimes for shopping. But one of the things, as Brian mentioned, we could actually advertise that it's coming to transport the other case, supporting human transport through four towns, mainly, you know, something like that, so that we it's actually what we are actually funding okay that's one thing and also the mention to four towns and really that supported by brothers of town council really, as well you know rather than it's, it's majority of change may be coming from other people maybe you, you, you can understand to a certain extent because a lot of the group people in bradley state are 
quite more affluent and a lot do actually still have their mm. own transport so you can understand why in some areas it is more successful than others but yeah I, I agree with what you're saying but there are many people who write their stuff like well there's no these things so we need to bring some this is like when we are doing from the residents often we need to inform the residents that we are actually providing this sort of service or supporting those things it's a, it's a good service, so we have got areas of deprivation in Brighton Stoke, and that is definitely right. So it might be an affluent area, but it, it's not necessarily, you know, just that we've got loads of money. Well, definitely, when you look at the census information, you can see that that is the situation. Absolutely. Yes, with that, I support the motion. Okay. So I think Elaine. Elaine <coughs> proposed it, yes, it's seconded by Tom. Those in favour, supporting the SLA. So, um, support the, do you mean financial? Yeah. So we get some from South Coast Council, oh. and we get some um, money from each of the other three town and par parish councils, so Patchway, Filton and Stoke Gifford. And CBS South Coast That's the South Coast money, comes through CBS. Yeah. Anything from South Brooks? Um, no, because we are serving Brooks to... Um, we have to get the money to come in to be able to afford to run it. <laughs> so it's do, you have, do you have a bank of volunteers? Yeah. Um, no, so we go out, what we are is we're a brokerage service. Uh -huh. So um, I have about 600 odd volunteer roles on my database. Uh -huh. And um, I go out and do drop-ins and promote the roles that we've got. And I promote them on our Facebook page and I send them to CBS. Um, and we're very much a brokerage service, so somebody will come to me and say, I'd like to volunteer, and we sit down and we have a conversation, and some conversations are easy, because they come and say, I want to volunteer in childcare, right, we've got this, this and this, and they go, I want to do that. And we get put them in touch with the organisation. Some is much longer, because they come and sit down and they say, I want to volunteer, these are my issues, um, I don't know what I want to do. So they're much longer conversations. Okay, so you, do you keep a... They are based on all the volunteers that or some people who are approach you. Yes. You have to yeah. use that for reporting figures, don't you? Exactly. Back to CBS, you have to send back quarterly reports. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't propose them for the man. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, <coughs> yeah, I second that. But we'd like to um, sort of ask a question. Um, I mean, where we've got a paragraph where we're supporting volunteering in Bradley Stoke, um, You've got like a little list there of um, times you've actually done certain things here to advocate the, you know, ad 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 advocate the service. But what I would like to say is there's a lot of people, the generation's getting older now, right? so there's a lot of people have moved in, and the people leave work quite often, they have got that sort of urge to sort of feel useful and do something. So your, you know, thing is extremely, extremely important. So. I'm just thinking, you know, the, 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 you know, because we've got a lot of people working living here, and I have actually been approached in the past by a few people in Bradley State to put in the direction of the volunteer section. So I don't know if we can actually do any design posting or anything. Sharon has um, the dates that I'm in the Brock Volunteer Library in the library for this volunteer centre. Send them through. Is there any kind of poster thing you could put, you know, for it, us here, for for in here, or not? 
or something. Because you're doing one in the library. Got one. We do one in the library. We can certainly look at coming. If you want me to come and do one in here, I can come and yeah. do additional. You know, we're looking at how we can improve the service and how we can reach more people. So if that's something that you want me to come here and do one. Yeah. Have, um, you, have you been to the Bradley Stoke Senior Friends Group? No. And the Young at Heart as well, that's two groups. No, so mm -hmm. norm normally it's people coming to me to say that they want to volunteer, but as I said, we're looking at ways of linking with more people mm -hmm. at the moment. So I could give you a list and times and meetings of like the more for the older members of the community. That, I think that would be really good because if you could then you know write to them because if you've got the address you just write them yeah. a simple letter and say look we are here um you know please contact us just a little thing because it, it may well actually push a few more buttons okay. um, for people who want to volunteer for, with vulnerable groups say the elderly or in childcare, do you do background checks and things on those? So we don't, but the organisations would. So the okay. organisations would know which roles needed those checks and which roles didn't. So if you okay. work with a charity that works with vulnerable people, but you're in a back office, you possibly wouldn't have that check. Okay. But the organisation would do that. Okay. Sure. With your statement here, I will say 240 negative. How are you going to get so it from there? So that is partly because our funding from South Gloucester has dropped this year. Oh, okay. um, and it's dropped by quite a lot. It's dropped by about £600, £800 this year. Um, so I, um, it's something I can go back and check with my land manager what she is sort of doing about it because she's sort of more strategic than I am. Oh, okay. So she has all the budgets and I just come and do these meetings and and talk about the work that I'm doing. Yeah. I think I also suggest we have the members funding available as well. So if you need any subsidies, I think you can apply to South Gloucestershire Council's funding for the councillors' budget. Yeah. That's member awarded funding, yeah, through South Wales Council. Mm -hmm. Are you aware of that? Catherine probably is. I don't know what Catherine's... Catherine's put some things through for some funding for the volunteer centres as a whole. So... Uh, but I mean, there's lots of local councillors that cover the area, South Wales councillors that cover the area that, that yeah. you do. So, like, yeah, there's the potential yeah. for memorable being yeah. available. Yeah. 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 You have £3,000, don't you, which you can award to various different bits and pieces. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's, that's necessary. Five. Yeah. yeah, you have a maximum of 500 which will cover, I think, this negative balance here. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. 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 Okay, so it was uh, proposed by Dan, seconded by Brian. Yep. Those in favour? Unanimous.
Sorry? <laughs> it took me a while to track down someone actually for victim support because they didn't apply for grant funding last mm. year despite two reminders. Um, but I did actually manage to speak to someone specific this year who said that they would pass it on to the person that dealt with it. But that was the 28th of October, but it's only so much yeah. I can do. Don't you want no money? That's what I think I've seen that's, that's, that's kind of terrible, that, isn't yeah. it? Okay, so moving on to community development grant aid, item 8.2, 8.2.1 is Bradley Stoke Radio, CGA 28. We have representatives from Bradley Stoke Radio to speak in support of the application. Yes. Um, so yeah. Thank you very much for your time, it's lovely to be here. Um, I've come down as a director of Bradley Stoke Radio, I've brought with me a board because I think it's nice to see pictures of some of our members. Bradley State Radio being um, a community group that's run entirely by volunteers um, in the community or around Bradley Stoke. Everyone gives what time they can to keep us on air and presenting, keeping our tech running smoothly, keeping the studios organised and tidy for the live musicians that come in, doing all the admin, the paperwork. Um, keeping the bank accounts balanced, replying to emails, answering the telephones and making cups of tea as well. Um, we're always looking for new volunteers and we um, do greatly appreciate the support that the State Town Council gives us to keep the, um, the, the rent paid and the electricity paid to keep us on air and, and to keep us running, basically. Um, I'd like to introduce one of our newer members to you tonight, which is Jason, and um, Jason would just like to spend a couple of minutes to tell you what Bradley State Radio means to him. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, in 2018 I moved to Pilton, and um, I've been interested in radio all my life. I've been interested in personal issues, issues that affect people, such as relationships, things like that. And um, I became a volunteer back in October with Bradley State Radio, I've got my own show, I have training there to be a volunteer and I have to say the, the human experience of being valued for the skills I offer um, the radio station and the radio station is, is literally an outlet for my creative okay. skills. I, I'm very creative, very intuitive and I can express my personality through the radio station. I can give back to the presenters and serve the community and it, it's, it's a wonderful feeling that I get back from uh, the community and give back the reciprocal thing I give to the community to raise. It's, it, it's lifted my spirit phenomenally and I want to make a difference to people throughout the state and surrounding area and I, I thank um, Brad State Radio for accepting on the team and I'm very pleased to be here this evening and um, forward our case for the station. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. And how many members, such members, do you guys join? Um, members now are up to uh, 60, 67. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we're, we're constantly uh, increasing or getting new interest. Um, so I say 67, we've got um, a young lady who's interested in joining us at the moment, and she's coming in just to sort of test out how it could work for her. Um, yeah, so a, a wide range of volunteers as well. Our youngest is 14 and our oldest is, I think, about 84 okay. at the moment. So it really is a community group in itself that um, accepts anyone and everyone across the boundaries. And it's really great because the older people are mentoring and supporting the new people that come in and across generations as well. So I, I would say we are probably covering four generations of people yeah. within our membership supporting each other. How do you manage each other. how do you manage the station? Is that really for seven kind of thing? Is it? Um, so we our committee run at the moment, we have a team um, of people who are taking on different aspects of the running of the station and we're meeting approximately every uh, six to eight weeks. Um, in, in person at the radio station and through Skype as well if people can't attend physically due to distance or commuting. Um, so we have people that are particularly interested in the technical side of things that are taking that on, um, the training and development side of things, the programming and scheduling. So um, yeah, there's about eight people at the moment, so a broad committee of people that are all taking on different roles and are working really hard 
He's in the station right now. Because it's a big responsibility as volunteers. How much how many hours you spend a week? How many hours? <laughs> <laughs> so I spent the husband's Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so I spent all day Monday in the radio station, um, nine to three around the school day. Um, Friday afternoons I'm in the radio station as well, supporting and mentoring. I spend most mornings and most evenings on my emails. Sunday afternoons I nip out and then come to the station and lock it up. So, yeah, Thanks. I live quite close by, so it's, it's okay. <coughs> I think it's great that you're bringing together isolated members of the community and creating a sense of you know, not feeling lonely as well. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to ask, when people come in and they get all the training to use the facilities, um, how do you do that? Is it done free or um, is it all done voluntarily? Yeah, so everyone involved in the radio station is a volunteer all, all the way through. So um, the, the training is done through <coughs> a couple of sessions that are fairly structured, introduction to the systems and how they work, the technical side of things. And, and then it's through mentoring. The studios are, are quite quite a busy place now. Sometimes you know there'll be sort of one person will be in for a few hours, but within that time, two, three, four, five, six people will come in and out. And if anyone's got a question, they'll just ask it to the room. And there's a lot of mentoring and peer support that goes on once those initial sort of sessions have taken place, and, and people are getting the hang of things. But it's very much. Um, Get in there and, and have a go pretty much from the word, word go. It took you about three weeks. It took me about three weeks, but I, I have to say, um, the human experience mm -hmm. of feeling valued um, and it reduces social isolation. That's a mm -hmm. wonderful thing to be part of the community. Community radio is a phenomenal thing to have and you know, to, to give back. And we're at the moment, we're just talking about the community of the volunteers at yes. the radio station. Right. Yeah, that's right. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's. Uh, it's I've, I've got my chance here to, my whole life's calling has literally been, you know, yeah. I've asked a family for all your life, it's just wonderful. And, um, and of course we represent the rest of the community yeah. through the content that we broadcast yeah. and we're constantly developing that as and well. Of course, good thing is as well, as, as, I'm, as I've learned to training, when new people come along, I can also help them out mm -hmm. as well. It's a sort of, I can pass on my information about learning the systems and that sort of thing. And I, I picked up remarkably quickly. It's really yeah. good, and and they're friendly. It's a friendly team, very sort of family team. We will get on well, and be wonderful. Tom, sure. Yeah, I guess you know, we can understand that how the game has already stated how important that community radio is. I propose the full amount of two thousand each of us. Do you want? Four thousand. Four thousand. Four thousand. Four thousand. Yeah, four thousand. Yeah. Four thousand. yeah. Seconded by Nikki. Yeah, I'd just like to say that um, it's been seconded. Been, you know, I've been involved with the station. I'm no longer a member at the moment, but the reality is it really is at the heart of Bradford State. And they've done more than that, and I've been doing as well. I mean, back to the matter of being taken Bradford State to different level. Bradford State was actually considered by a lot of people to at one point. Bradford State was great. And I've been a member of my mayor, and I've been an official from the room at Crystal Radio, a team of the room to really be people. So we have got a credible community in Bradford State, and the radio station actually supports all that community and more. And we've been right around South Gloucestershire, New Bristol, publicising the name Bradford State is definitely in uh, on the map. Just to say, you mentioned Radio Bristol a few years ago on Radio Bristol in the Leisure Centre and yeah. we were joking about Southland Grove and it wasn't particularly funny. Um, that has completely changed around now. The Huskins event at the Willow Brook Centre, I don't know if you know, that was actually taken by Radio Bristol. Our, our coverage, our recording was taken by Radio Bristol and then was that the following morning. And they asked us, they came to us and said, can we take your audience? No. It's a bit, it's a bit yeah, it, it's, it has changed significantly, but yeah, maybe I've got several they're phone not phone. taking the taking the myth out of that because they're not coming and asking us. Oh. You still got a copy of that? Yeah, that's it's actually it's on the mixed fans and then and the mixed plan. Yeah, go to the radio station website and listen again and then search for it and you should go to find it. Okay. Thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah, I'll probably
Those in favor? They're so sad when you put your hands up, just take them down. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll leave them on the table and as I go out and you can take one of them way out and if, you, if there are any leftovers, leave them in the public area. That would be great, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to 8.3 grand page. Grant aid, 8.4.1, YGA 42, scratch <coughs> aid for kids. <coughs> Do you want to say anything, Theo? Um, Do you want me to say what I know? There's not too much to say except that in the beginning um, we were a code club. There's many code clubs. Okay? And then it turned out that. Um, this is computer coding for young people to, to learn how to code on computers. With then then what had happened was we had migrated from coding over to um, physical computing, which is the integration of electronics and um, real world devices operated by children's code it's called Scratch. Okay. Uh, we started out with one computer and three kids. We can't be running about sixty kids a week. But we're needing a lot more equipment because what's happening is the kids aren't leaving, they're staying. They're starting at about four and a half years and they're going as high as 14. From there they, they take advice to go to various colleges. Um, but what I'm doing at the moment is I'm needing to improve some of my facilities. <coughs> hence the request for a, um, a bit of funding to get my laptops up and running. Um, the, the current scenario is I'm running Raspberry Pi computers, which is a nice economical base, it's an easy base. It's, it's, it's linked directly to physical computing. We, we had um, an invitation which I had to decline because of funding purposes um, to talk to the International Space Station. They've got two Raspberry Pis in the space station and they'd asked us to um, work with them to get some code working but the funding wasn't available at the time and we had to let that go, but we're hoping to carry on with that maybe for next December again, or we'll try that again. Okay. Okay. Tom. Yeah. Thank you, Theo. Uh, you mentioned that you're doing a program every <coughs> Saturday morning at the Christ the King, is that right? Yes, we're running every Saturday, yeah. And 40 kids are there right now from our list. Sorry? 40 children from the primary school. Um, the children are currently a bit older than what they were in the beginning. They started at four in the beginning, mm -hmm. but um, we've got no more four-year-olds at the moment. We've got quite a few applications, and the oldest are 14. And okay. we've got about a 60-40 split between girls and boys. Do you take new children, or is it limited? No, we don't limit them, because um, when a person shows an interest in this particular subject, they need to be satisfied and involved directly at the same time. Uh -huh. So um, with, the, with my original organisation, which run, we ran at the library, we had a waiting list, uh -huh. but I had eight people in the club. We had a waiting list of more than 200. Uh -huh. And it became an absolute crisis because by the time you're inviting somebody into the club, six months later, they, they go on to do swimming or ballet or whatever they're doing. Mm -hmm. So my current policy is that whoever requests to come into the club, and um, providing they um, complete the application form, um, may come to the club and have a taster. And if the taster is in the, you know, in, in, in what the kids are enjoying and understanding, then they will join up and then they will start. Okay. And the, the, the lessons are flexible in that we don't limit them to a particular time. So the early bird gets the worm. Some of the kids actually come in at, at half past eight and they leave at one o'clock. And they've learned an awful lot of stuff in that time. How much do you charge? Do you charge? I don't charge. So it's all volunteer? All volunteer, yeah. The reason, the reason is that for me it's a lot less complicated to do that. Um, charging becomes very complicated. Um, you have your insurances, you have other complications. Whereas at the moment I work through... Um, um, I make IET and um, the STEM Ambassador Hub, 
and between them, they keep me running with insurances and uh, legal documentation. Whatever I'm needing is basically coming through them. Thank so it's you. run as a community group. And yeah. So, yeah, thank you, Chair. Elaine's got a question, also Nikki. No, I was actually going to pose it. Oh, okay. All right. So. Yeah, just have a question. Okay, Nikki. Um, so, how many teachers do you have? Um, um that's a bit of a sore point. I I'm, I'm having a problem getting people to engage <coughs> at a technical level. So, um, I'm what I do is I teach the older children, and okay. they become quite well equipped. So, we've got three at the moment. So and then I the teach the parents to help their own children, okay. but at, at quite a high technical level. Okay. But um, the only technical person in the club is me. Okay. Um, it would be nice to get a few more volunteers coming through. Is it? Okay. I'm definitely yeah. help you with that. Out of interest, what, what was the, the actual costings behind the project that you couldn't afford to be part of with the space station? So I'm not picking up all that. How much was the space station that kept you up? What, what, what were the financial implications of working with them? Um, it was going to be mainly training because I started a project. We have little Raspberry Pi computers. That's a little computer about that yeah. size. And um, um, Yankee Candles had given me some screens, some monitors. And with that, I made quite a nice um, terminal. But we needed to improve that by getting a little console with an amplifier and headphones and I actually managed to buy most of the equipment, but I just haven't had the time to put it all together. And then once it's all together, um, to do the training on that. Um, so we kind of fallen a bit by the wayside on that. I just ask because it's a great opportunity for, for children locally to get yeah. involved in yeah. something like that. So yeah. I would suggest, separate from what we're talking about today, if an opportunity like that comes around again, yes, to yeah. come and speak to us again, and we may be able yeah. to help with funding for it, because it's just such an important opportunity. Yeah. Something that's uh, very good to be involved in. I don't okay, know. So if, I, if I take Elaine's proposal, she was waiting well, I, for first and then the second. I, I proposed to all of it. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. You should. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I think Elaine proposed that. Uh, yeah, Elaine, Elaine proposed for us. Yeah. But I didn't get to Elaine. Elaine proposed. Tom seconded. And that's the 499 pounds and 98 p. For the full amount. Okay, those in favour? <coughs> can, I, can I just make a comment? Yeah. You must be getting older because I was reading through this and uh, it just seems genius. I mean, it's a completely off the wall idea and I think it's great. I mean, it's yeah, a really yeah. good thing that you're doing. And initially I was thinking, wow. Yeah. <laughs> and the lovely thing is, so it fits in it's very, school. very different than the things we've done in the past. So. It's not yeah. a school to start to do it as well, aren't they? Yeah, so it fits in with what they do at school yeah. as well. So the I'm starting um, a full day course um, next year at um, Holy Trinity School. Sorry, at, um, at Little Stoke. I've offered both the schools, but um, Little Stoke have taken up the offer. So I'll be doing um, in-depth um, computing science with year three, four, and five. And it'll be a, a during school activity. They'll just throw a group of eight or nine kids at me throughout the day. Um, because the, the concept, in the, it, it started with the after school concept, but the point is, there's not enough time for that. Because they, they build a complicated Lego design, and um, they then have to add the electronics onto that, then they've got to code that, they've got to fine tune, make it work, then they've got to modify it, and then they've got to let their imagination go wild and make it do things. And I'm finding they're building and then they're breaking it down. So that's been a bit of a, a downfall. Do you, mind if we, do you mind if I come along just to see what you do? Sorry? Do you mind if I come along just to see what you do? You're all absolutely welcome, yeah. I'd love we, to see it. We run every Saturday oh, from Hoppers. <laughs> <and Hoppers. laughs> well, it was 1985 when I did my program. <laughs> also, if you're stuck for audio and you want some audio and amplifier or something for that project you're talking about, you've got my contact details. Give me a shout. Yeah, actually, that can be really helpful because um, I've been struggling, struggling a little bit um, to try and get, because, the, you know, the hall I'm running at the moment is one of the halls of the CTK church, and it's, the, the acoustics is not very good. And what I was trying to do was to improve the ability to talk to the people 
above the level of, of, of the drum of the um, give, give classroom. Me, give me a shout outside council. Yeah, my, my details are on the website. Give yeah, me, send me I'll email. certainly do that. Thank you. I'll yeah. see if I can help yeah. you out. Ah. No, certainly I'll do that. Thank you so much for coming up and thank you for what you do for the community. Thank you for listening to us. Appreciate yeah? it. Okay. And like I say, you're all more than welcome to come down and help out. And um, if there's some volunteers that are technical, we'll look forward to getting some of those. <laughs> but like I say, it is, it is a bit technical. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, I've had people coming down, but then they, they, they back out because it's the content is too technical at the admin level. The kids are loving it, and at four years old, they're building quite I, I've amazing robots. I've heard a lot robots. about it. I have. I have yeah. to say, so thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Thank okay. you. Thank you. 8.5 large brown taking on, so back to Greenton 6. Oh, yeah. Fab, come back. Fab! Okay. I do six to deal with any matters arising from the minutes of the meeting held on the 14th of the 19th, not coming else on the agenda. 6.1 is the update on the Waterway Activity Centre site development. Right, I have an update from Josh Mendel, which says um, following on site meetings and many discussions with neighbouring parish councils and local residents who had expressed concerns over the excessive light pollution into their property, we are now in a position to do this more. Thank you. Have a nice Christmas, guys. Thanks, Thank And I need, I will need your bank account details, Theo. Yeah, so you need to just your send me through an email yes. with your bank account details. Thank you. Thanks so much. Okay. Yeah, start again, please. Okay. <laughs> Following on site meet, this is an update from John Thanks. Go on again. Yes. Right, I will start again. Update on Brookway Activity Centre site development. Update from John who is currently at Tibetan Manager at the Club. Following on site meetings and many discussions with neighbouring parish councils and local residents who expressed concern over the excessive light pollution into their property, we are now in a position to move this forward and start phase two. We've already authorised the installation of additional hedging to the boundary line, which will help shield any headlamp lighting from cars using the activity centre site. The job will, that will tie all the tweaks together is to install bollards in front of the overflow car park allowing the site staff to control the parking usage. The bollards will be operated by the site staff and will be shut at the end of each working day before scout group and radio station take over for the evening session. Uh, we've now received the quote and John will be looking through the budgets with the RFP <coughs> from the town clerk on Wednesday and will then be in contact with the chairs of council to get their um, committees to get their go-ahead. It would certainly be good if we could get this finalised and agreed before I leave so that I know the site operation will be in good working order going forward. The local residents and the local council are both very happy with the suggestions we have made. Yeah, um, regarding the light pollution, I had an email from um, a gentleman. He's asked me not to give his name. And he sent me a picture of what's on one of the residents walls and I've got a picture here and it's a very very bright light that if anybody walks past that triggers it and it's like one of these if you're in a football stadium and that is opposite the car park so I can't get why this resident saying that there's a lot of light pollution coming from cars when he's actually got his own lights like that so if you want to have a look He's got one here, and he's got one here. So I think it needs to be questioned, why is that resident complaining about light pollution when he's got lights that's probably ten times brighter than headlights? So if you want to pass, do you want to, so that John can actually see that, um, if he wants the email from the gentleman, I'll gladly give it to him. Okay. Any comments? 
So what's the, what's the parking restriction going to be now on the section? Well, it's not needed at night anyway, so it's only during the day when, like, if you have South Gulf or if you have bookings in, it's very rarely that there would be any need for it at night. So it's very similar to the um, open <coughs> car park down there. The bollards will be in oh, place so. at the end of the working day going into the night, so there won't be an impact with can I suggest that we don't have a, a rerun of Chain Gate though? No, there won't be. Because <laughs> that, that Chain Gate, <laughs> when you closed off the car park to stop the dots going across with the chain, which caused no end of problems. Oh. I, could, I could see that it makes a lot of sense because there is no need for that overflow car park in the evening. You so. still want people picking yeah. up the chain, do you? No, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. not. No, especially not in the dark. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for that, Elaine. That's noted, and we'll go across to John. Anybody else? Anybody happy with that one? Just yes. about those lights on people's houses. There, is there a way for that person to adjust that? Or is it like it's set and they pulled that light and they... It's well, like, it's like a, light. a security okay. light. So when you so walk past, it, 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 it's, it lights up. But this yeah. gentleman said it actually blinds you when you're walking past. Because okay. there was something by the police, that a statement for safety, that said, make sure you have your lights that cut sensor lights in order, but I guess the brightness level is, you know, varies. So it's not like the security lights are set to all have really bright lights, are they? No, I think you have all different. You can have all different levels of yeah. light, just just enough so that you can actually see somebody's there. Yeah. But as this gentleman states, when he walked pa when he walked past it, yeah. it blinded him. Yeah. yeah so I can't I can't, I can't understand mm -hmm. why getting the complaints about the, the car park lights mm. coming into his house, yet yeah, he's got the great two great big lights like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. I didn't see the reason why you can't send a letter in with a copy of that on there just saying the complaint is coming in. Well, it's not. I don't think that's that. Um, I think a that the resident, yeah, the resident need, to would me. need to complain to South Gloss and they would yeah. look into it as environmental police. I don't yeah. think it's appropriate for us to uh, get involved yeah. in that. Surely they should make a complaint to the proper authority. He sent it to me to, because of me being on Brunstow Town Council oh, and because of um, the uh, things about to do with the lights. Well, obviously, he's been yeah, yeah. in the thing, so you can't say that. Was it in yeah. any of the journals or any about that discussion? Was it? Yeah. In the journal? Was no. It? No. 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 We, we were in attendance at a meeting and that's where that, that's where that was discussed, but it yeah. was. It was recorded. The light pollution issue was, I think, has been publicized. I definitely read it. Yeah, that was, that was to do. Yeah, that. Well, I don't think it was to do with his lights. It was to do with the cars. And no, no, no. I know, but I, that's what I mean. The the light pollution complaint yeah. in relation to our planning application yeah. was noted in the public domain elsewhere. Relating to the original yeah. lighting that yeah. was there so yeah. associated. Yeah. So what we what what the complaint we received that 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 issue yeah. was publicized, which is then obviously then triggered that response. But it, all I'm saying is I just think it's a bit strange that well, when you have to go back to the person and say they need to if they've got a genuine complaint about it, they have to go to the right yeah, yeah, yeah. South South Gloss. Gloss. Uh, environmental. Just, uh, my 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 uh, my area. So I attend that meeting. So there was a it was it in that news in the public domain afterwards. I think yeah, yeah, yeah it would be when here, John people. Butler, the, the two residents yeah. was here. Yeah, that would have gone into the pub, that would have gone into the minutes. Yeah, but yeah, and I'm sure I've read it on um, comments online as well on various different articles about stuff. Sorry. Right. Okay. Okay. Six point two of the on the provision of equipment. In Graham's update. Okay. That's a six point three. In which case we'll move to item seven uh, to deal with matters. And referring to work within the scope of the Leisure Youth and Amenities Committee 7.1, a youth development and participation worker at Big Point, Graham Baker. Right. Um, we have that table. I'll emphasise the, the headline bits as per usual. Um, yeah, all the regular youth work sessions have been taking part, um, place during this period. Um, the, we've had been, the weather on Thursday nights has been uh, particularly appalling, so a lot of the sessions we would have done here at the Jubilee, outdoor sessions, we've actually uh, done at the building at the skate park and redirected people. 
Um, and again, that, that building is proving to be very valuable because um, when we first had it put in, if there was if it, things were sort of rained off at the skate park, we would have like a limited amount of young people. But now just people expect us to be open there regardless of the weather, which we are. Um, and um, yeah, so although the weather's been appalling, with people are sort of making their way over to the skate park and we're, we're having very fruitful and productive sessions there. Uh, we still need, I'm going to touch on later, we still need to um, finalise the plans for the inside. Under young volunteers, I now have sort of linked to that, I have two young people who are year 12 students and they have to do a volunteering element. And they're now, uh, one, the, the, the female volunteer is working with me on a regular basis now every week. Uh, the, there's a male volunteer now who's doing like a product design thing. And he's really interested in doing some drawings and working up some CAD drawings and things like that for how we can do out the inside of the container and develop it into the three spaces that we've talked about before, which I thought would be really good. And again, it's trying to promote ownership over what we're doing. We've finally got three quotes for the outside paved area, which we talked about, which has got that sort of very temporary, horrible surface, which at this time of year gets soaking wet and you tread loads of dirt into the buildings. In the summer, it dries out and get loads of dust blown into the skate parks. Um, we're sort of fine tuning those quotes. I was talking to Sharon about this earlier, and I will be hopefully. That proposal then needs to go to full council for the approval of the actual contractor and then we can get on with that um, early in the new year. Um, girls Project is um, going really well. We've had quite a few new... It's incredible really because we haven't done any promotions in the school for a little while. Um, um, but people are just new members are coming, it seems to have been one of those things that's now out there in the ether uh, and we're getting 20 teenage girls, young women coming along to most of those sessions. We've, we've uh, booked 25 places tomorrow night for an ice skating trip to Winter Wonderland, so I think it's crossed. That all goes well. I might even have a go myself, so I'm not driving the minibus. But, uh, <laughs> But um, yeah, it, and that is it's just really quite positive at the moment. It, quite interestingly, for some of the skate park sessions, um, our youth work colleagues in Stoke Gifford, there's a couple of sessions where uh, they've been short of staff for some of the work that they've done. So they've actually sent over one of their members of staff to work with us, which is really nice for us to have an additional member of staff and work together and, and uh, uh, now that we had two of their workers actually on, on Thursday and both were quite interested in going on our casual bank of staff which is <laughs> which is quite good because they had a, they both had very positive experiences working alongside us and felt quite infused and uh, it's nice to get sort of almost like an external look at the work that we're doing and the relationships we have with some of the young people um, but they also work within a different environment. Um, been doing a bit of training, I know this sounds a bit left field, but one of the things we're working on, sort of gain a link to some of the self-help schemes and the furniture and fittings, a bit like we've built our own picnic benches and all the rest of it for the skate park. Uh, we've, we're looking at designs for that sort of trendy scaffold and wood type fi fixtures and fittings. But I thought if we're gonna do that, I need to um, go on an abrasive wheels training course, the joys of the job. So I did a half day course in that so I can now uh, cut scaffolding poles legitimately without <laughs> breaking health and safety legislation and uh, we will probably save a phenomenal amount of money on building some of the fixtures and fittings but also the young people will then be involved in putting things together, um, which I always think is the way we can, should go within health and safety and reason because it again promotes ownership. Uh, recruitment, um, we need to have a proper splurge but all the stuff that we've been sort of putting out, we've had 
very little interest. It seems to be the same problem across the area. I don't know. Youth work is quite a challenging job, so I don't know if people are uh, sometimes a bit deterred from it. But one of the things I was talking about at a partnership meeting, and I think there is quite some enthusiasm, is maybe we need to do like a, a, a joint South Gloss youth work recruitment fair type event so that a lot of youth projects across the area can all collectively invite people along who are interested so we could have a bigger publicity splurge collectively you know if you've got two part-time jobs it might create the opportunity for people to have a significant post across two different locations and two different employers so trying to look creatively at that sort of that sort of problem um, any questions on that section I think so because we as a sort of the youth work partnership again is the one that um, our lot just to remind people there's the, the, the whole of South Gloss is divided into three lots uh, and lot one is sort of Phil and Bradley Stoke, Stoke Gifford, um, Patchway, Thornbury um, and we're looking at joint training as well so we're trying to sort of re-establish some um, level two and level three youth work and training courses so training and we, it's a sort of a logical sister function really isn't it that you could be promoting training as part of the recruitment package as well which is the way we used to do things when we had more comprehensive youth services that you know you would you would be appointed to a post on the condition that you were prepared to engage in qualification training as part of, of part of that recruitment process something to take a south course or something that we could look at running well we are talking with south gloss south gloss have been at these meetings so and you're talking about people like um Sharon Adams, who's the, the commission officer for the, the youth offer monies that we're drawing down. And, um, yeah, we had uh, four, four South Gloss people at our previous partnership meeting a couple of weeks ago. So, yeah. And there's also been a lot of multi agency meetings because I think we touched on this before because the whole thing about information sharing protocols and safeguarding have been. Um, a concern, I think, uh, for myself and across areas because um, one of the things that has happened as youth work has sort of cascaded down more from local authorities to town and parish councils and voluntary sector organisations, as a professional youth worker I would be party to information sharing protocols across those agencies, but now as a town council we're not. And a lot of us are now saying we're making the case that that just seems that needs to be sorted and I think South Gloss are now because realising that. Because the you know, things have moved from... <coughs> well, you're, 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 to our you're, yeah, you're a youth worker doing maybe the same role but you're working for a town or parish council as opposed to the local authority and all of a sudden you're excluded from information and how that is in the best interests of the child uh, is... is um, yeah, it's kind of recognised that the youth work is, is filtering down to the lower level. To yeah, lower yeah, level. yeah. Is that like databases and things like that that you're excluded from, that's held by the local authority? Well, if I give you a, 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 I don't know if I mentioned this before, but a, a practical example, I was at an ASB, Antisocial Behaviour Case Study meeting, and we, I did, um, made my contribution uh, and so did the Willowbrook Centre and so did the Leisure Centre and then we're all excluded from any discussion and action. So you're seen as a professional youth worker in the same category as important job that they do as a local shopping centre <laughs> and a leisure centre. Uh, whereas all the other professionals who are part of the local authority or schools who are now part of the local authority protocols, even though they're private academy trusts, have yeah the law has been adjusted to share information, but it hasn't for youth workers. So in terms of the South Cross Youth Partnership, hardly any of us, well none of us now, are employed directly by the local authorities. We work for town, parish councils, or voluntary sector organisations, and now we're so we're all raising the point, which is now being accepted that something needs to change 
information, important information in the best interests of the child should be a two-way process. It shouldn't be a sort of like an information sharing hierarchy where we feed information in but we never get any information mm. back. <laughs> and, um, it's, yeah, it's a bit of an anomaly, which I think people, we've been sort of knocking at the door and repeating the argument, but that's, yeah, and during the last period there's been quite a lot of discussion and quite a lot of meetings at different levels. <coughs> Obviously it's not been, sorry, Chair, it's not been uh, something which uh, they've done purposefully to keep you out of the loop. It's just basically a product of what you just said, because, you know, you're, you're now employed by yeah. the tank rather than coming up from the other area. And then that information, in reality, is obviously really important to have. So I think it's uh, traditional protocols as opposed to, as you say, yeah. Yeah, purposely saying we were not going to involve them. It's, just, uh, it's never yeah. done. It's not, that's not the norm. But it's about and, and think it, it to make it the norm. It is a fear that you're breaking data protection protocols. Yeah. But if you look at any safeguarding documentation mm. or government papers or South Wales papers, they say that information should never be withheld if the interests of the child yeah. uh, at, are in danger because of withholding that information. Yeah. But it's almost like the fear of sharing information is greater than... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because of the That's one of the reasons it's given, but there, it's quite clear in, in, in like some point in information sharing protocols that you, you yeah, GDPR is there, but you should yeah. not not share information. Yeah, you can't <laughs> we, we've all seen over the last what, five, six, seven years, how long have you been with us now? Youth work five has years. evolved. Yeah. And youth work has become less concentric, as in youth loss provision, <coughs> it's come down to, the, to our levels, and not just here in Bradley Stoke, but across the board. Mm. But thing, as, as Brian has said, we've progressed. Mm -hmm. The things that have been put in place haven't moved with the times, mm -hmm. and unfortunately right. they need to. Another stark example is when I first worked for Bradley Stoke, I was seconded from South Gloss to work for Bradley Stoke. So I, I would have been doing my role and been party to that information share, but as soon as I then started working for Bradley Stoke directly, doing the same or similar role, then I was excluded. And it's like that's. We're going to ask them to. Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you, do you, do you need any district councillors help on that? Uh, South Gloss is sort of. Uh, 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 it's just, yeah, there's a lot of senior people who are now um, trying to sort it, but it's just like, it's just sort of. We had to, we had to make a lot of noise to. Uh, uh, email Frank and me. <laughs> so can you what, speak to this person? I think what I did help was the acknowledgement from some senior person in South Gloss that yeah. actually that's you, that's you should be receiving this information and yeah. that obviously yeah. then got them thinking, hang on a minute, why aren't they? So, it's counterproductive, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's ludicrous. It really is. And, and like I sort of politely made the point at one meeting that if something did go badly wrong yeah. and there was a serious case review, one of the outcomes of serious case reviews are usually that information was not shared yeah. appropriately yeah. <laughs> and as it should have been. So to be sort of not sharing information because of GDPR and because of extreme interpretation of GDPR. Well, it didn't share the information correctly. <laughs> so would it not be worth if you do come across things that are really causing the issues that you do speak with your friend yeah. or any of the yeah. other yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I, I always copy Sharon into all my lengthy mm. correspondence with various and people. And I have, so. I have discussed with you, yeah. you know, sort of including South Wales councils, if there is something yeah. which yeah. they could actually yeah. try to do <laughs> there. Yeah. We can go marching at her, can't we? Can we demand the information be released for our youth work here? How many uh, people are excluded in the day? Town councils, youth work? Ta town councils, uh, Sharon will probably know the policy better than me, though, isn't it? Is there something about. Southern Brooks also doing the same. Southern Brooks is doing the same. Yeah, yeah we're, we're all saying the same thing. My colleagues at Southern Brooks, my colleagues. From Creative Youth Networks, from uh, voluntary organisations in Thornbury, 
from facing Phil, and we're all saying, yeah, we're sort of united in saying that this should change. It's a bit difficult to send Brooke, so because they are, they are actually linked in with the schools, so in and then part of their organisation, where they do get information back and forth, but then obviously are not going to be able to share it with the youth organisation. Because it's the same people, sometimes it's all both things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's strange. Yeah. yeah, and if it's for child protection, you should be able to share that. Um, so if no, we share we share it, but it's not shared with us. That's so what that's I mean. that's what they, I mean. So they information should, sharing they hierarchy. Share that so. with you if you're dealing with kids who are in difficult situations. You need access to yeah. information. Yeah, all yeah, all vulnerable. Um, it's not even that. It's like there was one meeting they were talking about. Oh, the the four young people in Bradley Stoke, and we all know who they are. And I'm saying, well, I don't know who they are. You know, I can guess who they are. But they, so you're having this like conversation where no one will say the name of these people that everyone in the room knew their names and had talked about separately. <laughs> and, and how's that? You know, I could be. I could be working alongside those people on a regular basis, and surely I could then have positive informational, you know, nudge theory, all that positively signposting them, challenging them, if, if without actually talking about the, you know, it, 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 it's that's to us all the time on so far. You know, if people are seen, let people know. Yeah. Contact ICO. Information Commissioner's Office. It's the it's yeah. the interpretation in the legislation which yeah. says about local authorities and the definition of local authorities is actually pointing at principal authorities, not parish and town councils. That's where the issue mm. arises. And there so, lies the problem, yeah. yeah. So it's legislation. Yeah. But certainly I think if, if you need help and you need information then yeah. these yeah, guys yeah. But, but the other thing I sort of say uh, about it is that, you know, schools used to be under the jurisdiction of the local authority. They shared information. Then schools become separate organisations and they put in a protocol to bypass that and to share information. So that's the example of doing that. Do you know what I mean? And, uh, Tom says every, everybody's scared to death for GDPR as well, which, which hasn't helped the situation. <laughs> Okay, all right. right. Um, yeah, back to the... This is something else. You mentioned something to me today. I, I'm still chasing up. The, the people who... The, the, the ball singing and dancing thing that people were quite keen on in terms of the Jubilee Green. Um, I'm, I'm not pretending I've been onto it every day, but about three times since the last meeting I've chased, chased up in... Um, I won't name the company, but you've heard through your networks that they can be a bit remiss in terms of... But that was after sales service, not before sales service. So <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe that's useful information though, isn't it? <laughs> but um, this particular company, although they've got... Because oh, you've said that they've, they've even... You've put read receipts on the emails, and yeah, you can yeah. see that they've read the email, but that they don't respond. <laughs> We're trying to buy something <laughs> off them. I don't understand. You know, I don't understand. It's a lot of money. Well. It's not just like fifty quid, is it? You know, it's thousands of pounds worth of yeah. stuff. Yeah. Don't buy them. Don't let them buy them. <laughs> They'll probably answer about a year's time. So yeah, I I do need to. Um, that one's been on the just chasing them up. But we've we sort of, as you know, from previous reports, we've sort of got there. We know what we want. We. But, but <coughs> so is that the only old? I, I think the final question. No, we're still looking for grant funding. Yeah, and yeah, 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 but we want we want to know exactly what the costings are, and that's the sort of final thing. Because we had the consultation, we talked with you guys, we've refined the package, but now we want the costings for the package so we can start trying it's to draw down funding, yeah. the money. But there's other there's other companies is it, is out it there. Is a small company? It might be something like the other or something. No, they're not. They're huge. Do they? they do a lot of stuff. Oh, what, uh, and when they're all no, I've been, I, I was getting <laughs> receipts from two different people, so I was like checking that one. I was trying to keep that one covered. Oh, when it's in situ, oh, all the councils going to put their spandex on and get out there and stuff. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do a regular <laughs> stoke <laughs> town council and work, think so. work yeah, out for you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so, 
sorry. Too hot, sir. They did a big quote for. Be funny. Um, uh, I wear a sort of every day. Babies, didn't they? For the children's area. Yeah. We flat They already have this system. No, 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 they've, they've done quotes, but maybe maybe that's what they think we're doing, we're just using them for quotes, you know, and not, not putting them forward. I think perhaps we want the feeling that you want to mugger them. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Okay. Well, we might share information. <laughs> shall, we, <laughs> shall we move on? <laughs> yeah, anything else? That's, that's covered everything, isn't it, I think? And the mother as well is it's yeah yeah same same similar situation well same company, company yeah. as well you know we feel did on the near gallery yeah which I feel whether we can actually learn something out of something okay well I'm feeling refreshed in the new year I will have a Your challenge for the new year moving onwards item seven uh, we've done seven point one seven point two. Bradley Stoke and Blue Map Peak by Steering Group. Sorry if I thought it was going to take a second. Exactly the moment I was yawning there. Yeah. Um, uh, what can I say? Um, you may have heard that we got an email saying that um, you got a certificate and you'll be pleased with the result. And it was a level five outstanding. And the clue is there is no level six. So oh. you effectively got, got, got a gold. Well done. Well, Who's that from? We weren't the only ones in Bradley Stoke. We were, Bradley Stoke was a double gold winner. Um, Natural Care on Woodlands Lane also received a gold in the business and leisure area. I had the pleasure of taking their certificate round and presenting it. And I have been waiting ever since for photographs of that and some blurb. So, which is why I haven't given you anything, because I thought you'd like both in the newsletter. And that was me thinking you were going yeah. yeah. uh, sure. Not that Check great. I will send it with Rick. Well, so well done. done. Yeah. Uh, but I just want to say, yeah, thank you. Um, <coughs> on the note that on behalf of town council, we put our appreciation and congratulations to Bradley Street in Bloom. And I will note that. And what was the actual, um, it was a level five outstanding certificate for what? Uh, in your neighbourhood. In your neighbourhood, that's it. Um, uh, uh, award. And no. I think we have, we have put it on our website anyway, haven't we? And then we uh, yes, we can can it. Yeah. And, and you've actually got a, 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 a framed copy of the certificate. We have. Yeah. Yeah. You can test that somewhere along the line. Did you get a certificate? It's already done. Did you, uh, did you get a certificate from Bristol or something? Because I saw an Indian post or something like that. You were awarded some kind of certificate from Bristol. Were we? Yeah, like it was. It was actually a Bristol thing, you know. So for Friday Stoke, it actually said it was Friday Stoke in Bristol. It was just basically the way that you can post it, award, you know, run it. You know, this award was, was given to Friday Stoke. Is that this year or last year? No, recently, and I thought oh, I got yeah, that wrong because it was they were saying so like yeah. the award is just doing another shot. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> You read it as well. Yeah, yeah, I thought, yeah, oh. it was really, it was really, it was really <laughs> like you were in Bristol, you were like living in Bristol, awarded to you in Bristol for this thing. And of course, they said, don't they? I mean, Brady Stokes in Bristol, you know, yeah, the yeah, yeah. South Cross, aren't we? Uh, Last year we won out of the Bees Needs Award, which was one of only 19 awarded in the country. And the first we heard about it was and some um, councillor who we had never heard of and who had never heard of us had kindly gone down to um, the Eden Project to collect our award for us. So it wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me if there's something else kicking around that we haven't... It's the South Boss Council, Bristol City Council. Mm -hmm. It is. Okay. Well, I'd really like to thank you yes, because thank you. you've been going on for how many years now? And I've been you've going been... on for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can remember having three, bit, three meetings with you, all of you trying to persuade you to all come on board. And you've done such an absolutely fantastic job for this area. Congratulations to getting the gold 
the place up immensely. Yes. It does. Yeah, the education of Dalish was very good, always. And we've done a lot of work on it. Mm -hmm. And we worked on the main thing. A lot of things. You did describe um, the Mammoth Farm roundabout, just the, the roundabout that gave Bradley Stoke his heart, because when Debbie the heifer got stolen, it, it really was such an outcry. <laughs> <laughs> um, it has always been a social media. <coughs> it has, yeah. I mean, the return photographs, nine and a half thousand views in a day. Oh. So, um, and our steps out the back of the big field that we painted in rainbow colours. Um, they had four and a half thousand, four and a half thousand views, two and a half thousand engagements, and not a single negative comment, which I think is probably quite a record, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but there's another big roundabout that needs to do it. I know, I know. I don't have plans for it. You do? Yeah. Oh, you have to tell me. Yeah. Okay. Um, we've got... Oh. A lot of trees to plant, both through Green Gym and through one of the carbon offset companies. Um, <coughs> they arrived on Thursday. We had hoped to plant them on Saturday, but it's too cold. If you can put them in when the ground's freezing, you just kill them off. So I would rather do it properly and do it at a time that is good for the plants rather than a time that is good for us to say... We did it in National Tree Week. I'd rather do it properly and make sure they survive. And it's great these councils say they're going to plant all these trees. They're, they're tiny little whips. So mm, yeah. It's going to be it trees, years. Not shrubs. It's trees, isn't it? Mm. Well, I've, I've got a lot of hedging plants, which is one of the things I was going to talk to Sharon about. Uh -huh. um, do you need more hedging around the brook court? Um, I would suggest that you speak to. Okay, I'll do. This week, okay. because you're leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've heard, yes. Yeah, so. So, so how much have you got? How much uh, hedging? Um, we had about 400. Oh, 400 hedges. Uh, 400 trees. Trees, hedging, plants, okay. shrubs. shrubs. So where would you think put the trees? I went to the carbon neutral, uh, carbon offset meeting or whatever it was. Um, and one of the things was what is stopping people doing these things and um, a lot of the conversation was uh, South Wales Council on the one hand they're saying we're taking part in the tree week it's the first time they've done it even though it's been going since 1984 um, they're saying that we're going to do all this and then on the other hand they're telling us I've got to have a planting license to put a tree in the ground even on the nature reserve even if I'm replacing, for example, one of the orchard trees that has died. So um, how much is a planting licence for you? Hmm? Is it a cost associated with a planting licence? No, no, he, he, he just I thinks there might be a gas main under the ground. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah in case the, the roots break. Yeah, but, but certainly on the nature reserve, if there wasn't a gas main there three months ago, there isn't going to be one there now. Mm. So are they, are they refusing to give you the light? Is there no I, way I have, you've been able to obtain licence? I have to apply through John Morris for planting licences. Mm. But it doesn't cost you anything? It doesn't cost me anything. But it's, just the, it's just the process of going through it is the pain. And quite often they refuse. We've still got the tree, charter tree. We've got one of only 800 in the country, tree charter trees. Mm. Um, and I've still that? not been given permission to put that in anywhere. Are we able to do it on... Stoke and Green's behalf to request a license. Well, but it, it, it's not. It's, it's not. If she's having problems getting a license from them, it's 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 everybody just, has problems. It's yeah. not. It's not, it's not just me. Just her, Sarah. Although I do joke that I am on auto delete with South Wales Council. Is it John who's dealing with it, or hmm? is it John, or it? It seems to every everything with John to John Morris, and he's so overworked. I would suggest that you speak to the South Gloss councillors because yeah, they yeah, might be able to, to yeah. move okay, things along. Show you who's over there. Quite often, Gary Mayers. <laughs> 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 Gary Mayers is meant to be our contact, and I have never been told that he is no longer our contact. Mm. 
and I just email him and say we're taking over plot number 78. Um, I've notified them. Yeah. So, so we, you know where you want to plant them, mm. it's just you need the license for them. Supposedly, and, yeah. And it's basically um, in Savage's Wood, what's in that area around there somewhere? Uh, no, we put some in by the skate park this time. Okay. We're going to put the cherry trees in, I can't remember the plot number, um, but it's by Trench Lane. Because so, okay. we, we have been really yeah. keen on doing. Um, have you got like a little drawing to show where it is? Because you yeah. use, if you send one through to me, okay. you've got my, I can give it to Sarah, mm. and obviously to Frank, and, 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 and they can then contact the officer and say, look, we need this. How long are these trees um, going to be before they uh, they wilter or whatever? You know, I mean, because you've got to be put in, haven't you? You've got whips. Um, I've been sticking them in pots for the moment. Yeah, but have, I mean, re real, you know, realistically, I mean, have, when do you want this? By middle of January or something, or it'd be nice, but again, it will depend on the weather. Yeah. If it is cold, I just okay, well, we, we can do a letter. Just, just send, a, yeah. okay. just send a thing through uh, to uh, what's up, Frank, and I'll make, I'll make sure that Sarah and um, we get on to uh, I don't know to do something. What trees are they? I've got a few cherries oh, nice. um, because we really want to do another community orchard, yeah. Um, and we thought this um, area down by Trench Lane would be ideal. Um, we've spoken to a couple of people who didn't have success in putting orchards on slopes, but that wasn't because it was a slope, that was because of the ground. So that's... And uh, that's what, what, what is your best time to plan, trying to plant these Sorry? Trees? What is the best time you're planning to plant? No, National no, Tree no, Week is, is the first weekend of December. Yeah, it it's too bad. Very uh, bad. There's no sunlight, isn't there? Did they come through John the trees? No. No, they arrived. Did you say group or No, um, they have mainly yeah. come yeah. through yeah. Um, yeah. Um, the Woodland Trust. That's what you plant them in the ground. And <laughs> the, the last the light, you know, like hundred or so have you know come through the Carbon Offset Company. So you can't, um, you should really plant them the right way around. We haven't inadvertently framed your license and all the certificates you gave. The whipstick had it framed. Okay. Alright. Um, so, whether we need to take a performance that, which we mentioned earlier? I don't think so. Do you do it? Frank Lynn's going to sort it. Frank's just asking. Oh, you have your vote of thanks? Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Item 9 <coughs> is to agree the time of the next meeting, Monday the 17th of February 2020, next year at 7 pm. Bradley Stick Street Week Centre. So, Happy New Year, everybody, for next year. Um, I think this relates to you because there's a crossing, there was a mum who did so much petitioning in the local area for that crossing on Brook Way, yeah. and nothing's been done. But it's on the list, it's, it's on the investigation list. Yeah, they haven't done anything. But it, <coughs> it, 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 it takes a year. It takes a long while. It, 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 it is, at least it is in the system, so that's very positive. And they're waiting for an incident to happen yeah. before they're going to do something. It can't, it can't just be swing like that. It yeah. does take a little while to do yeah. it. But there's so many young people oh, hanging around that area. It, 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 it will take list. a while, which yeah. is, I agree with you is wrong. When it comes to children having to yeah. cross a busy road like that, because well, well, she does her own body. Yeah, she did all some, that. And yeah. She got all these signatures, she did all that, and it seems like. It's work, it's work what she's done. Yeah, it's yes, done. it has to work. Well, it is yeah. going through, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it, it does go on a list. Because yeah. it was on Facebook, and I contacted her. Yeah.